so many of these forces come together in the story of a man named Harold Stahl. Um, there's no reason you should have ever heard of Harold Stahl. He's just a guy, um, but he's a guy that I, 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 I heard about through his son, Barry Stahl. And I think you'll recall that I had mentioned Barry Stahl before as someone who really was one of the first people who, who blew up the intuition that when we get bad news, that we'll walk away. Um, and what he found is that, no, that's not true. When we get bad news, we'll actually uh, escalate our commitment to the cause. This is called escalation of commitment uh, and something that he spent his life studying that we actually double and triple down, like in the sense of like, I buy it at 50, it's trading at 40. And then I, not only will I hold it, but sometimes I'll buy more, right? Even though I wouldn't buy it today um, if I if I were fresh to the decision. So he did a whole bunch of work on that. And so when I was, you know, for the book, I was talking to a whole bunch of different people, um, uh, you know, who had done research in this space. So, you know, Daniel Kahneman, Richard Thaler, Colin Kammerer, uh, and Barry Stahl. And Barry Stahl was telling me how he started thinking about escalation of commitment because of his fascination with the Vietnam War. So wars are a place where we can really see this escalation of commitment problem, um, where once we start to accrue losses, both the money spent on the war, um, also right, the national identity that's associated with you've decided to go into a conflict as a nation, um, that that becomes a problem. And then also as you start to lose lives, right? So this is kind of the worst kind of most tragic kind of cost that's associated with something um, in terms of war and that feeling of those not wanting those people to have died in vain that, that make it very hard for us to ex extricate ourselves from a conflict once we've started. And I think we see that not just with the Vietnam War, which was the stated reason for Barry Stahl uh, starting his work, but also with the war in Afghanistan. And then now with what's happening in Ukraine, you know, where people keep saying, we need to give Putin an off ramp. And, and I just keep saying there is no off ramp for Putin because it's the same, right? He's committed so much and his identity is tied up in that. And how do you actually extricate yourself from that? So that was why Barry Stahl, at least consciously on the conscious level was studying it. But when he was talking to me about his work and the genesis of his work with the Vietnam War, he, he just mentioned an aside about his dad. And it was just a little tiny aside, which was that his dad was thinking about buying a business and Barry had taken some accounting classes. This was when Barry, before Barry had gotten a PhD and he had taken some accounting classes in business school. And uh, his dad said, well, look at this balance sheet for this business. What do you think? And Barry spent about 45 minutes looking at it and then was like super confused that his father would want to buy this business. Um, and he said, well, dad, why do you want to buy this business? And his father came and like added 20% to the, ask, you know, to the profits column and uh, subtracted uh, 20 percent from the losses column and said that's why because I'll be able to do that and um Barry thought this was very strange behavior so he he just mentions this story as an aside to me well um I I start to you know noodle on the information that Barry had given me and I got a little stuck on this weird story with his dad so I just said oh I want to find out more so I wrote him and I said hey Barry can we get on another zoom um you know, because we had only talked about his scientific work, really, except for this one aside. I said, because I want to ask you more about your dad. And he was like, I don't know why you want to talk about my dad, but whatever. OK, we'll get on a Zoom and talk about him. So we get on the Zoom and it is just an incredible story of escalation of commitment. So his father was named Harold, Harold Stahl. Um, Like many people, he moved west in the 40s. Um, as you know, the West was booming with the defense industry and so on and so forth. So his family moved West. Uh, Shirley Posner's family also moved West. Shirley and Harold meet in California and marry. Um, and they have two children. Barry is one of them. And uh, they're trying to, you know, make their way in this in this post-war world. And they cobble together a little bit of money to buy um, a grocery store. Uh, in the Inland Empire, which is um, uh, just e it's a, 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 a hundred or so miles east of LA. So uh, they have this little grocery store and, you know, it's going fine, except that like there's a bunch of big grocery chains that are starting to come into the area. And 
Barry sort of recognize, sorry, Harold recognizes pretty early that um, the grocery business might not be the right thing to do because there's these big chains coming in and he probably can't compete with them. So he sells the grocery store and with the money that he has for that, he starts a new idea and he, he gets this little storefront. Um, and his idea is to sell appliances to union members because there's a huge factory, the Kaiser factory, which is, and, and it's a unionized factory. So his idea is he's going to sell appliances to them at a discount. So he gets a little store that actually before he had it housed chickens. Um, the family like literally is like sweeping feathers out of the place to create it. He uses his, his the money that he has to buy some floor models. So he doesn't have any inventory, just has floor models. And he founds the union store. And it's kind of like a KP, right? So the union workers can come, they look at the model, they pick out the refrigerator that they want. And there's, of course, in the 50s, everything is booming, right? So people need appliances, they're buying new houses. And then, the, you know, they would pick it out, he'll order it, and they get the refrigerator at a discount in comparison to other places they might. But but there's a requirement of being a union member. Well, this goes really well. He opens up a second location. That goes really well. He ends up dropping the name, the union requirement altogether and renames the stores um, ABC stores. Uh, gets a lease on a huge 50,000 square foot property in Montclair, um, California. Um and that now he starts branching out from appliances to basically like all kind of like household goods, the space that he couldn't fill, he sort of leased out to to other people like optometrists or whatever. But now he's become more like, um, I don't know if you're familiar because you're like a Kmart or a Walmart. Or oh, something yeah, like yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it becomes much more like that kind of store, kind of like a one stop everything. So this is all booming. And he continues to acquire and build stores along this new highway that's stretching from where he is in 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 um, the Inland Empire to LA to the West, um, and actually ends up with some some LA locations. Um, so this is booming. Now, uh, at some point in, in like the early, I think it was the early 60s, um, he gets an offer to merge with a similar outfit in Texas. Um, and Texas has something called Sage Stores that had started with a similar idea of selling only to government workers um, and had then branched out to be sort of like Kmart or Walmart-like. Um, and the Texas stores were doing great and the California stores were doing great. So they actually end up combining. And um, Barry Staw is the CEO of that combined organization. And his stock, according to public filings at that time, is worth $3 million. It's in the 60s. Like, he's rich. Okay. So then what happens, though, is that um, Kmart, which was originally um, SS Creech Company, Kmart starts to expand. And they start to open up locations, sometimes like right across uh, or just down the street from the ABC stores. Now, this is only happening in California, not in Texas. So Walmart had been founded in Arkansas, but had not yet expanded across the country. It was still just an Arkansas store. So the Texas stores are not experiencing the same problem. Um, but the California stores are, and Kmart is starting to squeeze the California stores to the point where the California stores start to lose money. So the shareholders of this combined entity now demand action. And the action that they're demanding is that they sell off the California locations, which makes sense from an outside looking in kind of perspective, like the Texas stores are thriving. They're not experiencing the same competitive environment. Um, and the California stores aren't doing well. And so, of course, you should sell off the losing assets and, and keep the assets that are that are actually making money. Um, Barry Staw is resistant to this. He ends up getting sued by the shareholders. One of his be best friends, who was also the lawyer for the entity, basically abandons him and files the lawsuit for the Texas uh, shareholders. So this, again, like sort of like Muhammad Ali with like, you know, Ferdy Pacheco being like, hey, and now I'm going to quit you. His lawyer and like best friend says, dude, you're, you're like out of your mind here and actually switches sides in the lawsuit. So Barry Staw though, refuses to relent and comes to a settlement. They're going to unscramble the eggs and 
the entity basically unwinds and the shareholders keep the Texas stores and Harold uh, gives up any interest whatsoever in the combined entity. In other words, he gives up an interest in the Texas stores and he ends up with the California stores, which remember are losing money. Um, so now remember he had amassed a pretty good sized personal fortune. He starts to dump the personal fortune into the California stores in order to try to save the day. This is somewhere around the point that that he shows Barry a store he's considering buying. And, and Barry's like, what, dad? I don't even know why you're doing that. Um, and so he's really like, he's losing his personal fortune to try to save the day. Um, and then at some point, I think it was in the, around 1970 or so, uh, a, a chain called um, Fred Meyer, uh, was trying to get a foothold in California. They were an Oregon store, trying to get a foothold in California, and they offered to buy him out. Uh, Harold Stahl refused because he felt that they weren't offering him enough. Um, so he refuses that kind of bailout. And then uh, eventually he ends up bankrupt. So uh, this all the California stores go out of business, and all that he's left with is that big 50,000 foot property because he had a, you know, he had sort of a lifetime lease on that, um, which, you know, sort of sustained him. I mean, not in any kind of high style, but it sustained him um, until his death. Um, and it's just, it's like a tragic story of Harold Stodd, like this brilliant man who created this incredible business, but then wouldn't let go. And so the question is, why not? Well, we can certainly see some sunk cost here, right? In terms of Fred Meyer offering him a deal that wasn't going to make up for everything that he had that he had put in himself in order to try to save the store. That he just didn't feel like the deal was enough, you know. Even though obviously that shouldn't matter at all, it's is Fred Meyer offering you the, a good price for what it's worth today? So we we can see the sunk cost problem there. We can also see this issue of ownership, right? Because what are the stores that that he built himself? What what is the part of that business that he founded, that he created? that he's endowed to. Well, it's the California part of the business. So you might think logically, well, since he's CEO of the whole thing, that everything would be the same for him and he would just be trying to stick with the pros profitable assets. But the problem is that he, he didn't create the Texas stores. He didn't own them in the same way that he owned the California stores. And we can clearly see that preventing him from quitting. And then that also gets into the identity problem is that again, because he built it, that was part of his identity. He was he was the creator and founder of the ABC stores. Again, not those Texas stores. And it's very hard to walk away from your identity. It's a really hard thing to do. So when it came down to it, you know, we think about one thing that that makes it really hard for us to quit is that moment that we go from failing to having failed. And even though in this particular case, letting go of those California stores would actually have made that company more successful, it wouldn't have made Harold Staw feel that way. Because for Harold Staw, it would mean that his thing, the California stores had failed. Up until that point, they're only failing. And that is a very big distinction. The minute that they sell them off and he gives up the cause is the minute he say, says they failed. And that is a moment that we do not want to face. We don't want we don't want that conversion to occur. And so we'll keep going and continue, you know, to put great resources. This is the escalation problem into in, into the cause, uh, you know, until the very end, until you've fallen into the crevasse, until there's no choice but to file bankruptcy. That's about the moment that we're willing to walk away. So I did ask, I did ask Barry. So are you sure that you weren't studying escalation of commitment because of your dad? You know, and he was like, oh, I kind of never thought of that. Maybe. Um, I would say, I think so. 